Alright, so narcissistic personality disorder is an extremely interesting personality disorder in psychology. So now we've got two types. There's the grandiose or extroverted narcissist and then the introverted or covert narcissist. Now both types are coming from the exact same wounds in childhood and outlooks on life. They just express themselves in different ways. But for the sake of time in this video, we're just gonna go over what exactly causes these types to actually become narcissists, what the signs and symptoms are, what the DSM states will actually qualify someone for having full-blown narcissistic personality disorder, and why someone develops this disorder in the first place, which is an extremely, extremely interesting topic. And basically just how to figure these people out at the core so that you can guard yourself and that you can really understand why someone is acting the way that they are. All right, so now think for a second. Try to think of that one person in your life that you know that is constantly promoting themselves, constantly trying to gain attention from others, maybe stirring up drama that will get them attention in some sort of way. And also think of that person that has a super high inflated self-esteem and that will basically not take blame for anything and constantly tries to make everything about them in some way, always turns the conversation back onto them. Maybe it's the friend that you have that when you're talking, they will literally dominate the conversation and go, go on and on about themselves, but never ask you a question. And then when you start talking, maybe they respond for a second, but then immediately turn it back onto them. Well, you could be dealing with someone that is narcissistic or has just narcissistic tendencies. But by the end of this video, you will be able to really in instantly spot this behavior in other people and determine which people maybe just have some narcissistic tendencies and which people have full-blown narcissistic personality disorder. All right, so let's jump right into it. So the DSM states that in order for someone to actually have full-blown narcissistic personality disorder, they have to meet this criteria. All right, so A is significant impairments in personality functioning, characterized by either or of the following. Excessive reference to others for self-esteem and self-regulation, which just in non-fancy terms basically means that the narcissist's sense of self and self-esteem doesn't come from inside of them, doesn't come internally, they don't build it up themselves. It only comes from the external validation from other people in their life. And this is why they have to get validation from others in order to feed their own ego because they can't do it themselves. So their self-esteem may vacillate a lot between being super, super high when others are feeding the, their ego and they aren't getting that attention and that it's called narcissistic supply, or it could be super low when they aren't, you know, getting that validation that they need in order to survive. And so it can just really vacillate between these two extremes depending on how others are relating to them, not from it, again, coming from inside of themselves. So either the narcissist exhibits personality functioning by the one stated above or by this one. Their goal setting is based solely on the external validation, again, from other people and gaining approval from other people and how, the, and how their image looks, basically. So they might set unreasonably high expectations of themselves or, and this is really interesting, they have exceptionally low standards and goals for themselves because they have a sense of entitlement and a sense that, oh, well, I'm the best person here and the most competent, so this should be given to me. I shouldn't have to, you know, like work for it and stuff. All right, so the next set of criteria that must be met in order for someone to actually be a narcissist is that they have to have impairments in interpersonal functioning. So basically how they relate to other people and their in their relationships. So narcissists, according to the DSM, must have either or of the following. So number one is a lack of empathy. Narcissists have a limited capability of really truly stepping in other people's shoes and empathizing with them. So maybe if you're really upset at something they did or something that they said about you may have bothered you, the narcissist really just doesn't have the capability of understanding why someone feels a certain way. There's not this emotional intelligence or depth that they have. They simply won't be able to understand why someone's feeling that way at the core. They may on the surface um, try to understand just to make themselves look good, but they really at the core do not have the ability to empathize a lot. And sadly, a lot of the times they don't even really care to understand because it doesn't really help them in any sort of way. So they can't really recognize the needs of others However, they are excessively attuned to others' reactions of them, which makes complete sense if you remember what we were called from above, because they have to be excessively reactive to how others are perceiving them, because again, all of their self-worth and self-esteem comes from people, comes from external things, and 
things outside of themselves, their image, and how they are externally, you know, producing themselves. So the other part of the criteria, they have to have either or. This one has to do with intimacy. So sadly, narcissist relationships tend to be largely superficial. They don't have a lot of emotional depth to them. And they mostly exist to serve their self-esteem and self-regulation. Now this one is really interesting because this one really applies, you can really see this with narcissistic parents and how they relate to their children. So narcissistic parents see their children as an extension of themselves, basically. So basically how their child will reflect their own image as a parent. So unfortunately, their relationship tends to be super, um, super superficial. And there's an emphasis on how the kid is performing in life in a certain way and how how their kid is doing in life is a reflection of themselves as a parent and their own self-worth. So it matters a lot to them, the image that the kid brings to the family, and how that is a reflection of themselves as a parent, and unfortunately, this sort of um, extension of themselves is how a narcissist views and perceives all of their relationships in life. All right, so that is part A of the criteria. So now we're gonna go into part B. And this one is super interesting, and this is probably what you know more of when you think of narcissists. And this is the pathological behavior that a narcissist will generally show. So these are personality traits such as grandiosity, um, a high inflated self-esteem, feeling of being better than other people, maybe condescending, that sort of type, that sort of behavior. They also, again, exhibit a lot of attention-seeking type of behavior. And people sometimes can miss spot this behavior or think that someone is not a narcissist that actually is. For example, it's not always that big personality person that, you know, is always flaunting what they have. I mean, yes, that could be the grandiose type, but actually there's also another type which is more of the covert or introverted narcissist that is constantly playing the victim role and always feeling like people are wronging them in some way, yet they can't seem to really self-reflect or understand what their own behavior might be doing and how they can maybe be improved as a person. They can't really see that, but they constantly play the victim role and see how other people are wronging them. And for the sake of time, I won't go too into the differences between the different types of narcissism, although this is a really interesting topic. Let's probably do more of those videos in the future, but for the sake of time, we're just gonna go over the different signs and what the DSM states really qualifies for having NPD. All right, so what I said above is what the DSM states someone must have to actually qualify for full-blown narcissistic personality disorder. But what even makes a person have this in the first place? Are they born? Are they made? And can this even change? Like, why does someone even develop this in the first place? So now it's really easy to look at people that have these traits and have full-blown MPD in a super negative light because let's face it, they can be really annoying and frankly a pain in the ass. So it's really hard to um, have compassion for them sometimes and understand like why they treat people the way they do and why they act in this kind of superficial fake way. But an important thing to really keep in mind is that, and this was a big one for me, is that really everyone is self-absorbed in some way and everyone kind of falls on the spectrum of self-absorption and wanting other people to perceive them in a certain way. So while some people may not have full-blown, it's pretty rare that someone actually has full-blown narcissistic personality disorder, but I would argue that all of us on some level are on a spectrum of having some of these traits anyways. Like even when we do good things, part of the pleasure of doing good things is that it'll make our image look good and that's definitely a trait of narcissism right there. So it's just keep in mind when you're spotting this behavior in others to actually like self-reflect and realize that all of us have a lot of tendencies of self-absorption because we're just human. All right, so now a narcissist is actually made, not born. Someone may be born with certain narcissistic tendencies, but full-blown narcissistic personality disorder is something that occurs when there's a deep wound somewhere in someone's life. Probably early childhood, not always, but it's usually the case. So narcissists are made and not born, which is really an important distinction to have. But sadly, at the core of it, what you see on the surface is not what you actually get inside when it comes to narcissists. Narcissists are actually the most wounded and insecure people that are out there. That's why they have to have this outer facade and performance in life. Why is it that their entire self-esteem is built off of the validation of other people and externally? It's because they have no self-esteem within themselves. They can't regulate it within themselves. They are the most insecure people out there. Well, the reason they need all of this external validation is because really they don't have a stable sense of self. 
They didn't get this built into childhood like most of us did, unfortunately. A lot of times this comes from an early attachment wound in childhood, like I said above. And lots of times people that develop narcissistic personality disorder developed it because they have been hurt by a narcissist themselves or abused by a narcissist themselves. Lots of times the parent is one. Many, many times parents that are narcissistic will produce narcissistic children. It's just a fact because they didn't get that normal attachment bonding that they would have had with the narcissist because again, it's the, um, they view them as an extension of themselves, the kid as an extension of themselves. And so they didn't get this internal self-esteem built and regulated. Lots of times they will develop it from this deep, deep internal um, soul-wrenching attachment wound, which is pretty sad when you think about it. But narcissists have been so wounded at the core and not been able to be themselves and have that normal attachment bonding that they have to put on this false outer shell and fake facade in order to, it's a coping mechanism for this deep, you know, attachment trauma that they've had. And this outer facade hides their internal self. And it isn't because they actually feel like they're better than other people, although a lot of time they'll start to believe it, their conscious will start to believe it because they, you know, drill it into their head so much. But it's actually because at the core they are the most insecure people that are there and they haven't been allowed to be their true self as a child. At some point in their lives, probably early childhood, they got the message that they would not be loved just by being themselves. Probably some certain aspects of them were praised, such as doing good things, you know, more like not their actual personality, but the acts that they did. However, they're, you know, it's normal for children to um, cry and show lots of emotions that parents don't like. However, maybe those things weren't validated and the child learns to act and perform in a certain way and then exclude all those other negative emotions. So they learn that in order to gain the love and validation of their parents, their primary caregiver, they have to focus on those positive things and not live in their true inner self, which is a whole holistic personality, good and bad. And so that, that fake facade starts to overtake them because they have this attachment wound of not being able to be their true self and have all of those, you know, feelings together. So this facade starts slowly building in life because they still have that internal need for love and validation that they didn't get. So the way that they survive life is by masking that soul-shattering incompleteness in this outer facade that unfortunately their conscious starts to actually believe because it has to in order to survive. Now it wouldn't do any good to try to confront the narcissist or about this. Be like, oh I know you're really hurting at the core. That, that would not help because it's, there's a good chance the narcissist won't even understand why they have why they act in a certain way and why they have this outer facade because they really do start to believe it over time. And they likely don't even understand themselves and will probably not sit in something that puts them in a negative light for very long. So, but when you really understand why a narcissist is the way they is and how it developed, then you tend to have a lot more compassion for them because you know at the core they're actually really wounded and hurting and the most insecure people that there are basically. And the way that they survive comes um, solely from external validation. You can kind of think of it as sort of like a parasitic relationship. So you have the parasite that you mean has to survive by feeding off of other people and if it doesn't then it'll die. Well that's the same thing with the narcissist metaphorically. If they don't have their narcissistic supply or external validation, they basically die inside metaphorically because that is their coping mechanism and that is how they receive love. It doesn't come internally as it should. It comes solely from external validation and attention that they receive from others. So this is why they have to consistently, desperately seek this attention and validation because otherwise they have no internal sense of self and their own self cannot regulate their self-esteem. So this is pretty depressing when you think about it because that's an exhausting way to live. So once you really understand that this comes from a deep attachment wound that the narcissist has built in childhood or over time, then you start to have a lot more compassion for these people. Although it is really hard because they're definitely hard to deal with and they don't really, they aren't willing to see things from other people's perspectives. So it can definitely be hard, but you can kind of love them from afar and have a lot of empathy for them. So when you cross paths with someone like this, Try not to immediately uh, brood about how, you know, self-centered they are, how fake they are, how much attention that they need. Try not to immediately go to that place. Try to understand that they live and struggle with these, you know, a soul-shattering incompleteness and that they 
can't internally regulate their own self-esteem, which is exhausting and really depressing if you think about it. Because really inside of that narcissistic cold outer shell is this internal child screaming for the love and validation that they didn't get. And they are desperately shielding and coping with that. That being said, there's no point in trying to fix a narcissist. Unfortunately, this is the type that is least likely to actually be open to going to therapy and trying to work on themselves because again, they don't think anything's wrong with them and how dare you suggest that I need to, you know, fix some of myself. Because again, they feel like they are the best and they don't have anything to work on. So someone with just some narcissistic tendencies, um, sometimes this can actually be beneficial in life. They might be high achievers or, you know, some other um, positive aspects and they can usually hold deep relationships and relate well to others. However, someone with full-blown narcissistic personality disorder, that means all the criteria in the DSM, um, that person probably should love from afar and try to limit contact with as best as possible because it'll most likely just bring a ton of drama and hurt into people's lives. All right, and that is the psychology behind narcissists. What they are, what are the signs, and how they develop in life. Hopefully you learned something new about this disorder and how to spot it in other people. If you found the information in this video helpful, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future information. And this topic specifically I find super interesting in psychology, so I'll probably do more videos. There's a lot to talk about about narcissists and um, the different types and all that. It's super interesting. So I'll probably do more videos on this particular topic in the future because it's, so, it's just so fascinating. Alright, and thanks for watching. See you next time.